ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be moving. We've already heard the voice of the youth. They will not be still. They're like, we're here. We're vocal. We're visible. We're present. We will be heard, and we will co-create this future, because that is how you predict the future, is to co-create it. We were told loud and clear yesterday. So without further ado, let me introduce our next session. And you're in for a treat. Just when we said to you, uh, just when you thought it couldn't get any more exciting, guess what? It's about to. We're going to take it up a notch. So, harnessing the power of the youth is critical, as we've heard, to achieving the 2030 agenda for the, for the, the 2030 agenda for sustainable development, not only around water, food, and energy. We have eight years left. Right, the future is closer than we think. The future is here. Everywhere you walk around Dubai, Expo 2020, it says the future is here. Step into the future. And when you walk around and see these incredible constellations of architecture and culture and stories and people, you feel as though you are at a nexus, you're at an intersection, an interconnectedness, and you feel as though this is the future because the world has come to Dubai. What an incredible opportunity and experience. So coming back to the youth, critical questions. The key question remains is how do we enable more young people to distribute or contribute meaningfully and creatively, right? Because that's how we get the message across. Storytelling, through song, through art, through sharing, through panels, uh, through experiences like this one. That is what, that's what makes the message memorable and brings it alive, makes it visceral, and makes it a part of us so that we become messengers and sharers of the message, right? That's how we do it. We impart that energy of creativity and ignite other people, right? So now, I'm so excited about this. I have so many questions. I'm just going to calm myself down and curb my enthusiasm, right? Because we have phenomenal young leaders in the room, ladies and gentlemen. Um, right. I would like to invite on stage a young leader. He's visible. He's vocal. He has done incredible things. He was performing at President Biden's inauguration. Um, he has been tasked with producing an album with 17 of the world's best artists, along um, with a the theme of the S17 SDGs. And he's exploded onto the scene. And it looks like it just happened overnight, but it didn't. He has been hard at work with his vision, putting passion, energy, action, dedication, and commitment to this um, for the, at least the past decade, right? So we're going to find out from him um, how he has done it. And we have other leaders in the room who have done phenomenal things, who shared with us yesterday. And what we're going to do is ask all these young leaders the same questions, to share your challenges, to share your ideas, um, to find out, are you um, a group of activists and leaders expressing creatively, leading this charge? Do you feel that the rest of the generation that you represent get it as well? So these are questions I'm going to ask you. But first, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a warm welcome to singer, songwriter, producer, and UN Young Leader, A.Y. Young. Please join me on stage. Thank you. <laughs> I was so inspired uh, during rehearsal. I was like, I have to bring on this energy. Yeah. But... She gives the best intros, gosh. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, what up? You know, that's me, I guess. Huh? 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 I want to, you know, thank you so much for joining us. You have so much to share. These young leaders here have so much to share. And I know that you've been asked so many questions, right, over this, over these, um, past, over this past time because you're so visible, um, you know, and, and everybody wants a part of you. Everybody wants you to speak and perform and tell your story. And, and so I have some key questions for you. But I think what I want to do today also is, with our young leaders represented here, ask them the same questions to look at the similarities, right, because you have achieved a level of acclaim and success and visibility also through um, embracing a vision, embracing wanting to do something to work towards sustainability, the same as our young leaders are here. And there was a tipping point where all of a sudden you blew up, right? But it wasn't all of a sudden. All of a sudden. So I want to ask that question because when people see people in the spotlight, oh, overnight sensation, it just happened. It doesn't just happen. So give us some insight into what it takes, what kind of dedication, focus, time, energy, love, and passion goes into becoming an overnight sensation, right? Yeah. I think I have a cool story. So, you know, so when I was a kid, 
I kind of I lived in the hood, you know, and there was there was like four crack houses on my block, like drug houses, right? And I watched my dad. I, I used to follow him. He, you know, he started walking through the neighborhood, mobilizing the community, and we would, we used to do trash pickups and stuff. And I used to hate doing the the cleanups, you know what I'm saying? Because it was like a Friday, and I had to pick up trash that wasn't mine. But you know, I watched my dad sh shut down all the drug houses on our, our block, mobilize the community, and build something. It took years, years of cleanups, years of, right? And it was a step every day, you yeah. know? And, and so, you know, I, I think what I like to tell people, to show people is that, you know, for one, you, you know, if we're leading with our passion, the journey is a lot shorter, but it takes a step every day to, to make something like any of these dreams or goals happen in general. Thank you so much. A step every day. So how long have you been doing this? When, when did you start? It was over yeah. a decade yeah, ago. Yeah, 2012. A... Yeah, I got my start on like the X Factor TV show, uh, which is like a singing, it's like American Idol. And I got off the show and I, I just wanted people to hear my music like any other artist. And I kept being told like, well, how many followers do you have? And that's like when I learned, by the way, it does not matter how many followers you have. To, to take an action and to make a change. Like, I did not have a million followers. And then sometimes they'd be like, well, how many tickets has your last tour sold out? It's like, none, bro. <laughs> like, I just got on a TV show. So, you know, but that's when I was like hit with that, like, oh my God, I mean, I, we're in life, I, we're here to do, I, I know we're here to do what we love to do. There's no way we're not here to do what we're passionate about every day. So I was just like, well, how the heck do I like do a concert, you know, anywhere? And that's that, like, that kind of was my you know, moment of doing the work to figuring out well, how do I power a concert, figuring out, oh my gosh, I can store energy in batteries and, and, and I can power a concert. And that's what I started doing. Wow. Okay, so it was about how can I do my passion every day? How can I express my love creatively every day, right? And how can I, and it's amazing when you do the work and you connect to your core and you live your truth. It happens, right? It happens. And see, and, and here's the thing, like some people be like, well, AY, anyway, did you set out to be a young leader? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, you know, and I, it, it, was, it was never like, oh, I, I want to just, you know, it was never really, it, it was steps. It was like after, you know, show number 10, you know, I was performing. I'm like, I'm AY, and I look back, and there's batteries. I'm like, and this is the battery tour, <laughs> right? And then people would donate, like, oh, man, here's a dollar, bro. Here's, you know, we're your outlets. Aye. We power the tour. Wow. And that, that set me on my eureka moment. Oh, my God, you're right. She's an outlet. He's an outlet. Everyone in the world, every facet of humanity is like this outlet for change and plug into each other on the local community, the national level, we can power change. So I started going from city to city and state to state, yeah. you know, to go get the world plugged in musically. It was, it was a little bit after that, maybe show number 400, right? Like show, show number 400, power, when I was in my car and I'm sleeping in the batteries and, and I'm, I'm Googling because I'm wondering why in America I'm driving by places that don't have electricity or don't have internet. And I'm like, what the heck, I can do a concert. And I'm a billion people lack access to energy. So that's when I was like, well, shoot, I got to use my passion. I think music's a universal language. I got to build something to get the world plugged in. So it was steps. I didn't just start, yeah? So journey. Journey. AY, uh, thank uh. you so much. And for giving us access um, or an insight into this journey, how it happens step by step, and putting purpose at the core, right? It attracts so much because you're plugged into an energy that is creating change in the world. So I want to come over to our young leaders and I want to ask them, um, wh where did it start for you? What inspires you? We heard some powerful statements and, and, and impassioned um, demands really and challenges to the audience yesterday. How did it start for you when you hear AJ speaking about taking the steps and what triggered him to also make the choice to do this, what was it that triggered it for you to dedicate yourself to this work? Whoever would like to start. Um, yeah, it's good. Okay. Um, it's great to see the energy in the stage. First of all, like it's amazing <laughs> and inspiring. Um, the second thing about like your question. Um, it's, it never start like when you want it to start, like you discover that during the journey and it's a learning process. We're still young, we experience the stuff. So for me, it's like a learning process that I have been in so many um, different stuff that I have tried. And then when I worked with the land and the, I worked with the people, 
around me and I saw how, how much inspiration and change that it, it makes and how much the soil and the plants could change the persons to a better one. Um, this is where I found like my passion, but at the same time, I was talking to a, a, to a y like uh, in the break, and I was telling him sometimes we know the passion, but we never get the chance to do it because we face so many challenges yeah. that prevent us from doing our passion like I do a full time job, but on the side, like I do this project because I believe in it, and people don 't understand that sometimes like um, they don't really uh, know the meaning behind what I'm doing. And I, I don't think that they will until they try. So I advise everyone to like try to find their passion too. So yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for bringing up challenge. I think the question I want to ask is, what kind of challenges do you face as young leaders? And I'm going to swing that question back to you, AY, to share with us. What kind of challenges do you share in your journey of dedicating yourself to this work? And also, dear. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Um, initially, I think the stage will move from your energy. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Yes, yeah, like. <laughs> I think the challenges are um, the challenges are um, are very huge, but we cannot. Uh, but if we look for the challenges, we will not move any step. So I prefer to enjoy in the journey because the challenges are uh, very huge and very big. Uh, so I prefer to enjoy from the journey, working with the challenges, not looking for, not looking for it. So, yeah. Swinging that question back to you, and then I want to go back to you. Okay, before we come back to you, let me ask this young leader as well. What started your journey briefly, and, and what are the challenges that you're facing trying to move this forward, create this movement? Okay, um, I hope you all can hear me well. So, uh, unlike my colleagues here, I'm actually, uh, my journey has started really recently. Uh, uh, so, the topics of climate change, um, interlinkages between water and energy has always been on everyone's mind because you keep hearing it in the news and, uh, and stuff like that. But I haven't been involved in a lot of it in, in, until but I stumbled upon it by... Uh, mere luck, I would guess, and it's just like one of the uh, like they're, they're they're hosting a game, and like the Netherlands is just like the Dutch embassy is just holding a game, and like oh they're they're gonna have a discussion. I'm like I, that might be fun, and like I just stepped into it, and like that that just kind of propelled my uh, my journey, and like it kick started it. So I guess uh, um, I guess well if if we're tying back to that, like what what are the challenges that people face? Um, before they pursue their passion is basically to get their foot through the door, to step yeah. in through. Yeah. I think once you once you start, you know, you're just walking the walk. It's sort of you stop picking yourself up, and and it, it snowballs. So you like you, you keep getting more momentum. But I think um, if you can get past the initial um, barriers and, and and actually get that foot through the door, I think we can actually start making some. Um, some accumulating some momentum and making change and if we can actually support each other in that like uh, AY just said like people are outlets and they plug into each other and if we can actually yeah. plug into each other and propel each other um, I think that would just accelerate any uh, change that we would lead. Thank you so much. I've thought of another great question but before that AY -A -A yeah. you've heard from the young leaders some of their challenges and what started you've touched on some of your challenges what have been some of the biggest and how have you managed to overcome it is it mindset is it what is it I mean I, I mean I can sit here it, it, there's not enough time to talk about the amount of challenges I mean you can I mean it was like 2 years ago when like girls were like posting pictures on like Instagram saying yoga or selfie, you know, like it's like something switched. And, you know, for like eight years I had been doing this, all of a sudden people were saying, hey, that's a sustainable artist. So like so many challenges of continuing. But what I was going to say is I think our biggest challenge is like us, right? And I think that if you can find your why, you know, yeah. for me doing an eight hour concert was normal. It was weird when people would say, well, uh, 30 minutes set. I'm like, dude, I was used, when I started doing the battery tour, it was eight to 10 hour shows because if you work at Wendy's or McDonald's in America, you have to work a four hour shift. So for me, an eight hour show was normal. You know what I'm saying? But I also could perform all day, but it's because it's my passion and I found out my why. You know, do, you, you're, I think your biggest obstacle sometimes is you. 
once you get past that, once you discover your why, you know, whether it's an entrepreneur, whether you want to be a CEO, a dancer, a ballerina, the next Kobe Bryant, the journey builds you. Thank you for a great answer. So it is you, right? So talking about individuals and leaders, you're present, you're visible, you're present, you're visible, you're vocal. My question is, do you believe that the generation of young people you represent have the awareness and that they get it? Or are you spearheading this, trying to also convince them? Are you the, the converted, not, not to, to, to put that word now, but are you the ones who, who really get it about climate change and why these choices and, and this way of working is important? Or do you believe that the generation you represent has the awareness? What are your thoughts on that? How, well, how is, how is the generation that you're, um, that's a very broad question, but responding, and how do people respond to you? Is it something you switch on in them? Or do they recognize it? They're like, yeah, that's how I feel too, or is it something you have to translate? So um, I, I think it's like about also the journey, yeah. because like it's never um, about like what interests me, like because like young leaders will have so many things to care about, yeah. but to care about the climate change, it's, it's, it's big. And when they realize that this, this is gonna be their future and this is where we, they will live, and I guess that it's, um, it's obligate to them to, to care about because like it's not an, um, an easy topic to talk about. It's, it's very big and it's very huge and it's very controlled by so many levels. And to understand like all those figures it's, it messes your head sometimes. Um, as we have seen, like what happened in the COP26, it was like too much pressure that like even the smallest communities could, affect, could be affected by so many levels that um, not really like, um, that they have like so much impact in, in the progress of making or having the, the um, let's say the, um, uh, the emission that they have causes those those impacts that they, they are getting from climate change. So to understand that, like it's it's a whole of a journey that you need to care about. But they are aware. I think that they are aware. Yeah. Thank you so much for that input. And you have found a way, Ay, to to put the message in the music, right? Not only in the, your lyrics, but the way you do it. And that's so powerful because then people get it as well. So my question is, what are some of the ideas you have, as young leaders have, who are like to answer that question, of creatively expressing your ideas or putting it out there that can ignite other young people? And as you say, there are so many facts and figures, right? And, and, and so many statistics and you can get lost in it or feel disconnected from it. So what are some of your ideas to connect this generation also to the importance of the work that, that you are doing creatively? I think, uh, I think after COVID-19 and uh, the, um, and um, yeah, the, uh, after COVID-19, all of us uh, know very much what, um, how much we need um, this, uh, these things for the security. We know uh, a lot how much the resources, uh, it's important and how we can uh, how we can save it, but I think, uh, or, or because I'm an agricultural engineer, and I think always the, in my work, I always uh, focus on learning children how to, uh, yes, learning children how to, uh, what is sustainability, how it will affect on our future. Uh, I'm working uh, to empowerment uh, um, women uh, how to, uh, how to, um, uh, how to um, make a food security for for hair. Uh, so I think because I'm an agricultural engineer, always I think how uh, how can I affect on the uh, people um, to save these resources? Thank you for that. Do you want to add to that? Okay. Um, Thank you for that input. And there's something you raised that I want to bring back to you, Ay, on one of the threads. The microphone. Uh, so I wanted to touch on the um, uh, basically how do we get people um, sort of just excited about it, and then, and also the question about do you think your generation is more aware yeah. about the uh, the current challenges? And and to me it's a you know when like you have an exam the following day you, 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 this procrastination like you've been procrastinating the whole week but you need to do, do something finally yeah. like that that fear kicks in. I think this is what's happening, but just on a much much larger scale. Like we've realized 
recently that we've been kind of doing, like we've kind of been messing up the, just the climate and we haven't been doing it right, but then like the, now we have goals and we have uh, deadlines that we need to meet. And so yeah. that, uh, we've seen this sense of collaboration that brings people together. And, and, and when it ties back to my generation, I think absolutely it does. And one of the, uh, the strongest wheels that have driven that is perhaps technology. People nowadays and social media, we talk about uh, social media, it, it absolutely has negative consequences, but one of the beautiful things it does is it just makes people aware of what the current situation in the world is. And maybe when you, like, when, when it's reiterated the fact many times that we need change, people start accepting that and maybe uh, making small decisions in their life that can start to affect uh, and, and lead the, the change towards a more sustainable future, towards a better future. And, and uh, the current generation, I believe, is, is one of the is going to grow to be one of the, the strongest leaders in terms of climate change and in terms of sustaining the future uh, in, in the near. Yeah, that, that's one. Thank you so much for for that great input. Um, Ay, picking up on the thread of what one of the young leaders you were talking about empowering women and children. I have noticed that. In your comments, in your Twitter feed and social media, you've often commented on or been on panels on, on equality, gender equality, equity, and it's come up as an interesting theme, SDG 5. What does that mean for you? Do you have a connection to it and, and female empowerment in this context of, of your work as well? And just yeah. generally your ethos? I, I feel like we all got a connection to women, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and they're beautiful, but my mom's, you know, learned so, so much from my mom. Um, I don't know. Like, I mean, I, I mean, I, I definitely believe that we need more women leading, and you know, it's interesting. Overall, I'm not trying to diss men, but it seems like women come from like the hard place, you know, in decision making. Can kind of sometimes think a little more dynamically than us guys. That is the straight one. And having women at the forefront of some of this decision making and in the room. I mean, you go back to American history where I'm from. It's like you know. Women weren't even allowed to vote. Yeah, they weren't in the room when, when we made the Constitution, you know? <laughs> like, maybe, maybe we should have had their opinion in the room, you know what I'm saying, before we built the nation, you know? You're like, I mean, come on, right? You know, how many times has a woman saved our life, right? So, yeah, for me, definitely, gender equality, you know, LGBT community, all, you know, equality in general. Like, when I say everyone's an outlet, it's like, at the end of the day, if you trip and fall and you start bleed, it's gonna bleed red. If I cut, yeah. it's gonna bleed, we're all the same. You know, it doesn't matter how much money, how less amount of money, right? We're all these, these humans that can, that can band together, empower like change. You know, and so that's what I see. I just yeah. see people, yeah. you know, and I, I see this thread and I see music and entertainment and social media and marketing and all these things that some of these corporations care about. But here, as, as, as maybe angles to say, well, m maybe that's how we can bring these, these, these facets together. Yeah. So we can see real change. Thank you for a great answer. You want to expand on that? Go ahead. Thank you for that. So we were talking about ideas and how different people have different ideas. But at the same time, I guess the, the most important thing is connection, how we network with each other, how yeah. we complete each other ideas. Yeah. It's a very strong thing that we should know. Because like sometimes I talk with someone who's working on this sector, and then they have a problem that like I know that there's other people who's doing the same. Like You could fill the gap. And to connect them both together and to build a stronger community with everyone yeah. is involved. And can I in definitely it. say, like, there's a huge disconnect. It's like, to be honest, exactly. I didn't know what the goals were a year and a half ago. I'm straight, I mean, I did. Like, I was, it was crazy because they were telling me about this, something about millennial goals, like 20 years ago. I had no idea, but you know what I do know? When Kim Kardashian posts a picture. <laughs> yeah, because everybody talks about it, right? And it, it's interesting, I was sitting down, I'll just end it super quick because I know I don't know about time, but I was you know, sitting down with the number one independent artist in the world, right? His name's Tech Nine, you know? And I, I, I was showing him the goals. He has no idea what the goals are. This is the number one independent music artist in the world for the last 30, has no idea. But I do love the framework of the goals because I said, man, just take a look. You know, there's water, you know, people have food. What do you care about? He goes, oh man, you know, this is Tech Nine. This is Tech. He just turned to a human. Doesn't matter how much money he had, right? Oh man, you know, I really care about, you know, poverty because I came from poverty. I said, bro, that's where you're plugging at. 
to your outlet so power to a scene rap about it right you know because we're all yeah so it, it, but but we're disconnected because when i'm in the the un you know or i'm in the government space or i'm over here with the athletes because i was a division one player a lot of my people play in, in the nba and stuff they're we're just so disconnected you know so i agree Thank you so much. Oh my word, talking about time. I, 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 I really love that, um, the points that you brought up. And I, I completely forgot what was my, my closing question because there's so much to talk about here. We have these incredible young leaders. We want to thank you so much for sharing from your side, from your side, your wisdom and experience. Um, I think the, the, the question I wanted to ask as well is your album, right? So there are a number of firsts, right? You are the only American to be a UN young leader at the moment, right? Um, you're the first artist to power your concerts with solar power, right? And now you are going to, you've been tasked with making an album with 17 of the world's best known artists around the SDGs, the 17 goals, and you can do it without a record label. How do you, uh, <laughs> so, okay, so I mean, a lot of first. I'm glad you noticed that. It's like, hell, he's doing this without the music. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, but let me, let, me, let me ask you this question. But it's just, it's, it's amazing, the leapfrogging and the connections and what you're demonstrating is the ability to connect in so many ways beyond and in between the channels and, you know, and, and direct connections. So I think my question to you is about the album. Can you give us insight into who you want to collaborate with on this album about the 17 goals and why? Maybe the top three. Yeah, I mean, from the street to Dubai. <laughs> I was just in the street corner, guys. Um, at the end of the day, it's not about how many followers you have. It's not about any of that to me. It's just about what you're passionate about. You know, like, I, I do want to know, like, what does Justin Bieber care about? What does Cardi B care about? I listen to her music, but if I was to show her the goals, what is, you know, I, I met this comedian, he's, he's my homie now, and he's, he hopped on Project 17, because when I was in the UN, I realized, oh, shoot, if you're like Leonardo DiCaprio or like Greta Thunberg, you can't, you're not going to rap with Billie Eilish or sing with, right? So I, I, we, we have multiple versions. Like, you know, we're going to do the, uh, the EDM version, the poetry version. So there's people like Paul Hawken who's already sent in, you know, a 30-second statement about his favorite goal, right? Uh, and, and the comedian Eddie Griffin. But at the end of the day, for me, whether it's a company, a corporation, a charity, you know, that because these charities are, uh, it's also 17 companies, 17 charities, right? That, that, that can, you know, be empowered by the music to then do what they do. You know, so, but my line is the same. You know, like when we, were, when we were meeting with Samsung and before we did all the crazy stuff in Milan with Enel Green Power as another corporate, with, with the corporation, the entire marketing team, I said, well, what do you guys care about? Oh, what we care about? Goal seven. I said, well, that's where you plug in at. Right. What do you do? I ask everybody to do two things. I say, one, power the two, or power support change. Power, you know, and then the other thing is, is taking action. Yeah. So if it's, if it's, you know, because I've been hanging out with Billie Eilish's team for like a year, and it's like, okay, like the thought with her is, okay, girl, sing, power the tour, you got a voice. But what action are you going to take yeah. to be a part of products? Is that no plastic water bottles in your next tour? So those are my lines. It's not, and I mean, of course, I'm like, I'm thinking about like, what does Paul McCartney care about? And I want him on goal 17 myself, but Paul might stand in front of me someday and be like, yeah, man, I really care about fish. Then I'm like, okay, well, shoot, at least you go 14. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. <laughs> Thank you what so you much. What you about, girl? What you most plugged into? <laughs> this is the dopest moderator I've ever seen. You, she asked good questions, though. I'm like, dang. <laughs> yeah, make some noise for her. <laughs> Thank you so much. Are you flipping the script on me? No, come on. <laughs> I got it right. Hey, everybody's like, hey, I wonder what she cares about. You didn't <laughs> say. You have to be an outlet right now. Just throw out a goal and you're scrolling. Oh, my word. So many, so many, so many, so many. You know, it, this, is, this is about you guys. I'm like, at, at some point, you know, I, I just said, you know, my generation and me, we're going to eventually just be made redundant. So we just have to fix what we already broke because you guys are taking over and we just got to support and help you. So I care about people. I care about people, the planet. Um, I care about so many things. Um, it's so hard. No, look what you've just done, okay? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and I, I have my husband over there. We're a storytelling couple. And it is a short insight is we both have experience in media. And when we met and got married, we like, where do we put this competence? It's almost 15, 20 years of competence. Hey, let's work with people, ideas, and organizations having a positive impact, because those are the stories that I want to hear more of in the world. And then our, our you know, we're called Thought Leader Global, big company for a husband and wife team. And our uh, ethos was global, connected, aware. And my husband one day was like, what does that even mean? How about stories connect us all? I'm like, that's it. Hey. There Good we go. <laughs> queen. Hello, honey. She's a queen. <laughs> You're just taken over. Like, yeah, I told you. Girl. I'm just going to leave. because. <laughs> You know, I just want to thank everybody for participating today. AY, thank you for your energy, your enthusiasm, your amazing insights into what it takes. Um, and, and just congratulations on all your incredible achievements. We're going to be watching this space. We know it's connected to your core and to your heart and to your purpose. Thank you for inspiring us. Our young leaders today, thank you for your courage, your input, your pushing this movement forward as well. And also for, for highlighting again the power of connection, our partnerships, right? We cannot do this to, we cannot do this alone, and together we can do more. Energy, that's what it's about. We spread the energy, we spread the love. Now the session is not over. Um, I totally forgot what my transition was because you <laughs> but I just wanted to say, any of the young leaders, do you have any questions, any questions, any comments? One of you representing the group of questions to AY. Okay. Can you combine it? <laughs> no, just keep it brief and then yeah. right. Okay, uh, anyway, what is the goal that you care about more the most? Ah! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, people do this. Sheesh baskets. I, I mean, at the end of the day, I just, I'm just gonna be like, yeah, goal 17 right now, just because that's the first song that I like, you know, like, let me see. <laughs> but I can't, I mean, goal 17. I get, I get an answer. I don't know. Bringing everyone together. Everyone. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I want to ask you, what is your uh, advice or message for all youth people who want to, uh, to start um, and, and they think that the challenge will, uh, uh, will stop them? them? Yeah, yeah, I mean, just like I would tell an athlete is a start, right? Like, I wanted to play Division I basketball. I wanted to go, I wanted to be like Kobe Bryant. So I would wake up in the morning and shoot 500 shots. Then after practice, I would shoot another 500, right? And you have to know how to allocate your time. What do you want to do? What do you want to be great at? And I believe in something called 10,000 hours of ma you know, to master something, right? So, so jump, like Steve Harvey says, go, right? And take a little step. The little step could be like, you know, I want to make a difference in my neighborhood. Everybody's looking at social media and all these millions of followers and thinking, oh, if I'm not making a big impact, yeah. I'm not making any impact, which is ridiculous. Yeah. It's absolutely ridiculous. You can pick up a piece of, you can literally say, you know what, for prom, I'm not gonna drive this car, I'm gonna carpool with my boys. Localism. There's little small things you can do every day. And then you build off of it. That's what I did, that's how I got here, right? Doing concerts every day for eight hours, 10 hours, every Monday through Sunday. After year six, I went out and did another year on year seven, then eight, then nine, then ten. And you guys just now met me. Huh? 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 <laughs> and we're still not even there. Huh? Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Now, it's not over. <laughs>